Hi, in this exercise, we're going to perform some more advanced raster operations to answer a simple problem here. You can see right here, we've gone through and calculated the distance to water right here. This vector layer represents the distance to water using the Euclidean distance. This layer here represents the variety, the number of different pixels within a particular neighborhood that we selected. And this layer represents deer habitat, a very small layer for Durham County. You can see the blue layers represent deer habitat. These greenish brown layers do not represent uh, deer habitat. And you can see here these are booleans right here. What I'm going to do is try to combine layers that satisfy a distance query, a variety query, and a habitat query to find the areas we're going to have most likely to have deer vehicle collisions. If they're close to water, what are going to be near deer? When we look at variety, well, we're going to have a lot more deer vehicle collisions where there's higher variety, where the deer have to cross from one, co one uh, cover type to another to another, where there's a higher likelihood of deer vehicle collision. And then finally, in the blue areas here, that's where deer are most likely to live. They're not going to live in the urban areas right here. But before we do that, one of the operations that we talked about in class was a zonal statistic. If for some reason or another, I just wanted to look at these particular grid areas here. Okay. These particular grid areas here. I have these four grid areas here, and I want to see which one had the most variety or the least variety. And these are just simple polygons right here, but I could do this by county, by census tract, or block group, or anything like that. These are what we call zones. Okay, and I down here I can go to my zonal operations within my spatial, anal spatial analyst toolkit, and I can do zonal statistics as table. And my input raster is going to be my variety, this focal right here. My input raster value is going to, uh, I'm sorry, my, it's going to be my grid final is my zones. These contain my zones. My input feature raster is going to be my focal. And then I need a unique ID, and I'm going to call it ID because this is the original ID number so I can uniquely identify this particular polygon if I need to go back and join it. When I'm set here, I'll just click OK. And, and what it's going to do is calculate statistics for each of these four zones right here. Right, it's very hard to do calculations with raster on raster. Right, we can have something called a combine, which combines these rasters together, but it's a very resource intensive process here. I can open this up right here, and now I can look at information about these four polygons right here. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Okay, 30, 340, 341, 356, and 357. I can see here in 357, it's got a much higher mean. Okay, meaning there's a lot more variety there. It also has a higher standard deviation, has a higher variety here. So I can go through and see which one of these have different statistics attached to these. And you can see here using this ID here, I can join it back right to this original GIS data layer here. Okay, so if I open up my grid final here, these can be joined right to the ID right here. So I can go through and map these. Now, Doing it for four isn't very useful, but if I had 350 or 360, this is especially useful. And I found this is a really good way to summarize data at the quad level, because it's very hard to look at pixel on pixel on pixel and start to compare these different layers of pixels. So if I were to group them according to some sort of enumeration unit here, it makes it much easier to do. So if I were to group them according to this enumeration unit, and there's a lot of information in spatial statistics books that tell me the optimal size for a, partic for a particular grid unit that we can have. Okay. Now, the other thing that I want to look at here is I want to perform some calculations where I want to perform raster calculator applications to look at, let me find all areas that are less than half a mile from a water body, have three or more variety, and also are within a deer habitat area. Okay, and I can do this running a very simple raster calculator right here. Raster calculator looks a little bit like our um, select by attributes calculator that we have here. Okay, and you can see here, I'm going to look at my Euclidean distance, and I'm going to look for all areas that are less than or equal to 2,640 feet. Okay, we're working with the, the foot units here if I look at my projection information here. So I'm performing a simple query right here. Euclidean distance is less than or equal to 
40 feet because that's half a mile. I'm going to click OK. Okay, and you can see in the bottom here, my raster calculator dialog is running. Okay, and here it is. Okay, and you can see all the areas in one. They represent areas within half a mile of a particular lake. You can see areas zero, okay, in this uh, green area. They represent areas that are more than half a mile. So we just have a Boolean output here. Next thing I want to do is look at my Euclidean distance, uh, look at my focal statistics here. Okay, so I'm going to look at my variety. So I want to find everything with greater than or equal to 3 because I want very close to a water body, high variety, already in a deer habitat. I'm going to click OK here. So right here, I'm going to look for the areas that have high variety here. Right, and you can see in my bottom right here, we have our raster calculator running. still running. It's going to take a little bit longer because these are based on distances here. The, you can see these blue kind of buffers right here based on distance. Okay, and here we go here. So these green areas represent where the surface, uh, where there's variety of greater than or equal to 3. Zero has little variety. Now you can see what we have here. Okay. You can see what we have here. We have a zero or a one. Zero or a one. One are the things that satisfy my criteria. A couple things I can do here if you think about it. If I go through and add up Raster Calculator 9, Raster Calc 10, and Deer Habitat Study, if I add all of these up, I'm going to have either a value of zero, one, two or three, where three is the most likely, but I want these to satisfy each of these exactly. And we're going to look at these here. I'm going to run a raster calculator where I'm going to multiply these three together. So if any of them are going to have a value of zero, any pixels that are laying on top of each other have a value of zero, it's going to make the whole thing zero. So I'm going to do raster calc 9 times raster calc 8 times deer habitat study. Now I'm going to multiply these together. And what I'm going to get here is a Boolean. Okay, basically, I got a 0 or a 1. Okay, and you can see right here what these represent here. These green areas represent areas where all of these are all 1. Areas of 0, any one of these is zero here. Okay? And I can look at the information about these. I can look at my properties here. I can go to my source. You can tell, you can see that the cell size that I have here, the number of rows and the number of pixels. Okay, and then when I open this up right here, if I ask for what percentage here, well my values of one, my values of one, there's 3,725 pixels. Value of zero, you can see right here, have 32,238. So we can easily calculate the percentage of pixels that are green here. Okay. So you can see an example right here. My last example, and I was talking about this before, what if I were to go through and add these up? Okay, so if I were to add up raster calc 9 plus raster calc 10 uh, plus raster calc 8, 8, I'm sorry, plus deer habitat study. Same exact thing here, but now I'm going to have 0, 1, 2, or 3. It, when I went through and multiplied it, I treated it as an and. All of these criteria have to be satisfied. When I go through and add it up, it's, we're going to do something what we call weighted. Okay, and you can see here, you can see where my 3's are, where all of these are satisfied, and you happen to notice that it happens to coincide with my greens right here. Okay. Okay. 
So now I have my threes, which were they're all satisfied. Where basically we have our distance criteria is satisfied with my deer habitat, is satisfied with my variety component. All these zeros have absolutely none of the criteria satisfied. Two of them have two of them satisfied, and these blues have one of them. So here it's what we're looking at more of a weighted index here. When we look at these zeros or ones, when I multiplied it, it treats it as an ant. So in this exercise, we talked about map overlay operations using raster, using very simple queries in raster calculator, and then I just added them in one case together, and I multiplied them. And then previously, I used my zonal statistics as table to create tables based on zones. They could be counties, zip codes, block groups, FIPS codes, whatever we want to do to calculate this information at the polygon level.